I am so honored to present to you my friend, my comrade in kingdom advancement, great pastor, great bishop, great leader. Res give a warm jubilee welcome as you stand to your feet and receive the ministry gift, Bishop Larry. It is so good to be back in Detroit. Um, as we tend to see, uh, as we come back and through here so much, we're just coming home rather than visiting. Amen. It is, uh, this is my, my, my second home uh, in Michigan, amen? amen? So it's amazing. I, I, I was telling the apostle that just, just to think about what God did and how he got me here and then how long I've been here and all the stuff been doing in this state, not just in this city, but across the state. It just blows my mind. It really does. I never saw it in the plan of God and couldn't even have known it was there. Couldn't even have prayed for it because it was not even on my agenda, not one, not one bit. And so um, I, I will hopefully tomorrow help you to understand why that kind of stuff can happen. But today we're going to, we're going to go in there deep. Is that all right? Amen. I, I welcome all of the men that are in the place. Normally, we, like when we do True Value, there are um, mostly women, and I'll tell you how we got there in a moment. Um, <clears throat> but um, um, before I do that, let me tell you about that table so I won't forget, because if I don't do this first, I will, I will not do it. Um, I didn't bring a lot of my, my material. Um, I just brought the stuff that was pretty much relevant to this weekend. Um, so that you could, you could take advantage of it. Um, one of the things I have to bring in most cases when I go places, if I have any of them, and it's interesting, um, um, most of these books are selling so well I can hardly keep up with them. Um, this one book is Knowing God by the Numbers. Last night we were out to dinner and I began to unpack some of the stuff that was, was in this book. This book is an amazing book because um, it was total revelation to me that God would um, teach me how to understand what's in the scripture um, numerically. Um, we know a whole lot of numbers that are already present in the scriptures, but we may not know that the whole Bible consists of numbers. The entire Bible is their numbers. Um, because Hebrew is a what is called an alphanumeric language. What that actually means is that their letters are their numbers. Greek is also an alphanumeric language, which means that also in Greek, their letters are their numbers. Now, we remember that from school by doing Roman numerals. Y'all remember that? That we wrote, you wrote letters, you know, I, come on, y'all remember? I, two I, three I's, come on. I, V, V, I, come on, y'all, C, Z, X, I, you see? So you learn Roman numerals. Roman numerals are also uh, partly letters. Not all of their all of their letters are numbers are letters, but that's they're partly letters. So that is um, pretty interesting. But in Greek and Hebrew, all of their letters are numbers, every letter. So that means if you look at a a a Bible that is in Greek and Hebrew, not English now, in Greek and Hebrew, you can convert every letter to a number, every letter. That means every word is also a number. Every phrase is a number. And so on and so forth. All right? And when you find out <laughs> what God has done numerically in the Bible and understand it is a divine math book, the revelation of the Bible just explodes even greater than the literary side of the Bible. And it's just amazing to understand that. And um, the way I got there was in August 2008, the Lord told me to have a celebration on August 2008. And I knew that was Triple New Beginnings. That's what I thought it was anyway. That it was 888, it was Triple New Beginnings. Um, but it was a little bit more than that. Um, come to find out that the, uh, 
the name Jesus in Greek is 888. Okay. Wow. Mm. Y'all ain't here. Y'all ain't here yet. And the only triple number that we really know anything about is what? Ah, there you go. Now he gave you a little insight about the 888 because the one that's trying to imitate him also have triple letters. That's, that's just enough right there for you to go get the book, isn't it? But I also found out that every name that's associated with Jesus um, actually is a multiple of eight. Every name, Lord, Jesus, Christ, Savior, Emmanuel, Messiah, are all multiples of eight in the scriptures when you convert it to numbers. And the reason that that is is because he is what? The new beginnings. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. He is the new beginnings. He is the eighth day reality, which is a whole nother thing, praise God. He is the eighth day reality. So everything about him is new beginnings. Y'all with me so far? Okay, I'm trying to take my time here because when you talk about numbers with people, they lose their heads a little bit. But I'm just telling you, this is amazing. And so when I found out that Lord Jesus Christ, when you look at that name, it would have to be what? A multiple of? Eight. Of eight. So Lord Jesus Christ is 3168. And I found out that on our globe, there is latitude and longitude, isn't it? Longitude, latitude. Y'all remember that? Any of that? Y'all remember that from school? Okay. We're 31.68 degrees north latitude on your map. It's Bethlehem. That's crazy, isn't it? The other thing that's amazing is that if you could put a box around the earth so that the box touch all sides of the earth, so north, east, west, south, you touch all four, all four sides with a box, and then you check the diameter and circumference of that now, you will find that it is 31680 miles. You didn't hear that, did you? That means he signed... His name, Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, I, I won't take you any further. It's in the book. It's in the book. But he is the author and the finisher of your faith. Every author signs his name. So the, the only way the whole universe would know it would be by numerical values. Because numbers don't change no matter where you go. Hallelujah. Preach, Bishop. Okay. There's that light right there. I heard that light. That light right there. And I'm not even preaching. I'm just trying to give you some stuff. So this entire weekend, actually, this, this, this day is about true value. Um, I decided, I didn't decide at all to do true value. I didn't want to do, I've been speaking for Promise Keepers, men's um, organization for over 20 years, iron shoppers, iron men at the cross. I'm a man's ministry leader, if you will. I have a ministry called Frontliners Men's Ministry. Um, had it over 30 years. We, I'm after the heart of men, to train men to be better men. Amen? Amen. So that's who I am, and that's all I wanted to do. And um, standing in stadiums, talking to a stadium full of men, um, all over the nation. It just was where I wanted to be. But I was doing a marriage seminar in our, ch not seminar, but actually class. We have marriage classes every first Sunday. And, um, and when I was doing it, I was teaching them some things that the women started saying to me, hey, we never heard that before. We've never heard it that way before. Could you teach the other women in our church what you're teaching us? No. That was my response. <laughs> no. I do not want to do that. That's my wife's job. She's over the women's ministry. She can handle that. No, Bishop, you got to share this. And I wouldn't do it. And so they would not leave me alone. And so because they would not leave me alone, I decided to have a Saturday meeting such as this. And I said, we're going to have a Saturday meeting. Um, I'm not doing any advertising. I'm not do if you, it's word of mouth. Uh, that's it. I'm not doing anything else. 
And um, they said, okay, what should we call it? I said, call it the true value of a woman. And they said, okay. And the church was packed to overflowing with women from, every, from across the city and even out of state because they wanted to see what a man had to say about their true value. And um, so we had the conference. It was a meeting. It was a great day, all day long, great day. And um, long story short, my wife said to me later, because I was doing other meetings, my wife said to me, you know what? You need to write a book about this. At that time, I was writing this book, and I was writing another book at the same time. I was writing two books at the same time, and I was doing a lot of research for this book. And I said, no, I don't have time. And so she came back to me later and said, you know what, you need to write that book because you're saying these things to women, but they can't go back and repeat them a lot of times because they don't, it's not what they have heard. I said, well, I don't want to do that. She said to me, well, I think if you write the book for the women, you'll sell a million copies. I said, you should have told me that first. <laughs> wrong with you? What's wrong with you? You should have led with that. <laughs> I'll get right on it. So I did, I got right on it. She's been seriously a prophetess in that. We've sold so many of these. It's amazing what this book has done in the lives of women. They're out there too. Um, so this is the foundation of everything. In this book, what I, when we would do our national conference or regional meetings and um, um, when we would do those, one of the things that women would wanna know about a lot as we, we kept hearing these comments back Tell me more about what you're talking about, the sound that's in this book. We talk about a, the sound in this book that a woman can make that a man can't resist. Mm. Jesus. <laughs> and that if she knows how to make that sound, she can get anything she wants from him. She can move him any way she wants to move him. And women say, tell me more about that. Tell me more about that. <laughs> Every woman want to know about that. Amen. So we would go into it a little bit deeper. But what I decided to do was take that particular chapter and section out of this book and write an entire book just dealing with that sound. It's called The Sound of Man's Kryptonite. <laughs> if you know anything about Superman, the only thing that can weaken the brother is kryptonite. This sound is kryptonite. I was just telling um, Apostle, there was a, um, um, a lady just told me, and I was laughing. I, I had to laugh at her really strong. She said to me, she said, I can't believe how well this stuff worked. She said, my husband does everything I ask him now. I said, Lord, I done messed up men. My daughter is in, 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 in the process right now. She's had a little fr fellow friend that she's dating. And, <laughs> and she said to me, she said, she called me on the phone. She said, Daddy, it works. <laughs> I said, what did you do to him? She said, I just did what you said, and he couldn't believe it. I said, yeah, I understand. So if you want to know how to move the heart of your men. Matter of fact, the first thing I deal with in this book is the fact that um, a way to a man's heart is not through his stomach. Right. But that's what you've been told. Right. Right. And that came from the 1800s from a columnist called Fanny Fern. She wrote that in a column call, and, and everybody since that time has been saying a way to a man's heart is through his stomach. To eat all your food and not do anything you say. <laughs> and ask for more, praise God. But in actuality, the way through a man's heart is through his ears. Amen? All right, brother, and so I also, because, you know, men, men like to listen to stuff. We put together a, a USB port with about seven or eight different, I think about seven, eight, maybe eight now, on here, messages that's on this, on this USB port that you can just plug in your computer, download, send to your phone. And so that's out there for men. These are men's, men's messages that I've been teaching all over the country, some Promise Keepers, some other places like that. Amen? So you ready?
Sure. Okay, Father, I ask you now that you would ask that you would bring the revelation of God into this room. I ask for the wisdom of heaven and the understanding from God now that this information that I will give is understood instantly in Jesus' name. I give you the praise, the honor forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Bible talks about wisdom and understanding. It says that wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Now, I can tell you this. We've been approaching life, most of us, from school on the wrong way. We've been approaching life from this place. Get knowledge, give me information so I can try to understand it. That's backwards. The wisdom of God gives you understanding so that when information comes, you instantly can understand. So approach information that's coming to you from an understanding heart. You already say, I have an understanding heart, so what you tell me, I will understand. Come on. All I need is the information. Are you with me? I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to get information to try to understand it. And that's backwards. I'm never going to get it. It'll be hard for me. But if I approach it like I already understand it, just tell me. Then it's easy for me. So that's what I want you to do today. Amen? Go to the first slide for me. Um, again, you can go to the second one. Go to the second one. Go to the second one. I'm sorry. All right, so we're going to deal with the foundation of everything. The foundation of everything we're going to deal with is from the word of God. Okay? I'm not going outside of the word of God here. Everything I'm going to tell you is coming from the word. And therefore, I'm hoping that it will um, impact you in a way that will take you to another level. Um, what I want you also to know is these are the things we're going to deal with first. We're going to deal with the beginning. All right? If you're taking notes... We're going to deal with the beginning. When, and what are we going to deal with in, in the beginning? We're going to deal with what's in his image, you see, um, in his image. It's all about them, the dominion mandate. That's what we're going to deal with. Man's physical creation. Dress and keep, not good. That's what we're going to deal with right now in the beginning, all right? Everybody with me? You sure? So if you would, go to Genesis with me. Go to Genesis with me. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna start we're gonna start at Genesis one. You can't talk about you can't talk about women or men without going to Genesis. <laughs> you gotta start with the beginning, right? And so let's go to Genesis. And Genesis one, we understand whose idea this is, right? This is God's idea. It's not it's not anybody's idea but God. So if we go to one and six, as you already know, you know these verses very well. But let's, let's, let's unpack them a little bit. It says, and God said, let us make man in what? Wow, that's pretty good. I like that right there. He says, let us make man in our image after what? Our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over, over all the cattle and over all the earth and over every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. I'll read 27 for now and come back. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now, notice again, what, well, you know what? Let me keep reading because I need all of these in there. And verse 28 says, and God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now, this is amazing because when you read, when you read these verses, what, what um, we've overlooked in these verses is one word that is so important for two people to live together as husband and wife especially, um, and then that's the word them. Again, be, and, we, and I'll tell you why that happened in, 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 a, in a moment. But what happened is you've got to get back to a them mentality. Did you hear what I just told you? Everybody got that? Because God did what? He says, let us create who? Them. Not, and, he, and he created them that's both of them in his image after his likeness. It wasn't the man that he created in his image only. 
wasn't a woman that he created in his image only. He created them. Not only did he create them in his image, he also did what? He blessed them. So the blessings that came was not just for the man, but also for the woman. Are you with me? He also says you have authority. You're going to have dominion over everything I've already created. And he said that to who? Uh, he said it to them. So the dominion mandate is given to them. Now, what hell did, and we are nowhere near that yet, but what hell did in Genesis 3, the enemy comes against them so that they will start working as him and her. At the moment he causes them to function as him and her, they lose. Because the authority is with, the blessings is with, oh my God. The multiplication is with, oh my Lord. So if we're not functioning as them, we're not functioning from the place that he created. So most Christians, and we, we're really going to get into this, most Christians have a after fall mentality. Even while being in the church, we still think from an after fall mindset. When clearly Jesus came to take us back to a pre-fall mindset and even beyond it. Not only, not only from the fact that now you're going back before this fall happened, but I'm going to take you even back further than that. You see? But if we could just get to a pre-fall mindset, we would be much better off. So we could walk back into that place of dominion. Most of your struggles, if you are, um, I will talk to you single folk a little later. I got something for you too. But watch this. Most of you, if you're married and you, listen, your, your struggle is because you're not functioning as them. All of your, all of your struggles leave instantly when you find the them mindset. Not, I, I've, told, I've told businessmen, especially this, when I've talked to men about this, I said, look, to businessmen, I said, look, you, um, you will do your business and keep your wife out of it. I said, that's a, that's a real bad mistake. <laughs> well, she doesn't understand my business, doesn't need to understand your business. You understand your business. But you need her as them to help multiply and bless that thing. If you, don't, if you don't have her input, even though she doesn't understand it, she don't need to understand the inner workings of it, but she needs to understand that I'm a part of it, and therefore the them mindset comes into place. So I'm telling you, this thing is crazy when you get it, when you understand that we've walked away from something that we've got to grab back. I, I, I'm, I'm trying not to go ahead of myself. I'm trying to hold myself together, but I am. I, am, I mean, I'm having problems right now, I promise you. I got so much I need to tell you so fast. But you notice he says that he created them, male and female created he them. Okay, so we now know who them represent. Them is what? Male and So there is no them other than male and female. If it's two males, it's those. It ain't them. Come on, come on, come on. If it's two, come on, the two women is those. It ain't had nothing to do with them. The them is male and female. So the power is through the male and female connection that God has created through them. 
Now, this is going to, come, this is going to become clear in a minute when we, when, we, when we get down there to that second part. The dominion mandate has to do with two amazing words that's in this, in this verse that you've got to look up and in the Hebrew. Because the word there for dominion is the word rada. And that word is R-A-D-A-H. All of this is in the True Value book. But R-A-D-A-H, that word means to oversee and um, rule over that that will willingly submit. Okay? So when you have an authority and the thing you have an authority over submits to you, now that's RADA. Okay? If you got a dog and the dog does what you say, the dog is functioning under your RADA. Are you with me? You have a dog that doesn't submit to you, doesn't do what you say. You have to deal with that dog a little different, don't you? Come on, are you with me? All right. The word for that is the word subdue. And the word subdue there is the word kabosh, which is K-A-B-A-S-H. K-A-B-A-S-H. So the kabosh means to make something submit that doesn't want to. Okay. So God tells them that you have both. You have the ability to have dominion and you have the ability to make something work that doesn't want to work. Now they're in paradise. There is nothing out of order. Are y'all with me so far? There is nothing out of order. So why would you give them an ability to kibosh? Because there is something lurking on the earth that you haven't had to encounter yet that you will need to kibosh when you meet it. Everything that's already here that you already see is willingly submitting unto you because it's of my creation and is not a disobeying me. But there's something on the earth that you haven't seen yet. And who did he give this ability to to handle this thing that would be on the earth that they will have to see, that they will have to make submit? Who did he give that ability to? Yeah. I can hear you. Who did he give it to? Yeah. Oh, he gave it to them. Oh, my, 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 my. Let me run over there to Genesis 3 again. Men have given, been given a bad rap, and they should be because Adam was there when he allowed this snake to talk to his woman. But she didn't need him. Oh, you didn't hear me. She was not a little damsel in distress. She didn't need him because she already had been told she could what? Kibosh. It wasn't told her husband, husband, come help me. I'm trying to get some help in here. Okay, y'all doing that. That means amen in Detroit. Okay. All right, so, so that is amen. That's Detroit amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Charlotte, they just say amen. amen. <laughs> just wrestle with you guys. But isn't that amazing? But we always look at Adam. We should, based on his not taking his rightful place as a man, but his wife didn't need him. She had the ability, she had a dominion mandate, she had Rada and she had Kabash. She could have told that enemy, get out of my face, go back where you came from. Which is why he had to beguile her. Which is he, which he, why he had to trick her. The trickery had to do with the fact that he knew he couldn't out authoritative. He was not authority over her. He was under her authority. And anytime you get tricked, that means you know you, don't, you can't win. The tricker knows he can't win, so I got to get, get it some other way. Y'all with me so far? Good. So, so again, what I've told folk, and you know, you, you can look at that, you can see it with the police force and whatever. If you get hit with the lights and you pull over, rada, right? You get hit with a light and you speed up and run, you're going to get kiboshed. <laughs> Kibosh don't feel good. Come on, are y'all with me? All right. So when you understand that, God gave that to them. 
So matter of fact, I tell young couples, I tell couples that I'm marrying, um, um, they're going through a spousal period and they get ready to get married and I'm going through counseling with them. I tell them, I said, now at the end, when you get married, at the end of every week, for the first six months of your marriage, I want you to get used to doing something. And they want to know what that is. And I said, I want you to take an account of your week. First six months of your marriage, I want you to take account of your week. Whatever day you decide, Friday or Saturday, I want you to look at what happened this week in our marriage. What happened this week in our finances? What happened this week spiritually? Are you with me? Yes. Now watch this. Was everything functioning under our authority? Or did something get out of line? I am talking to somebody. And if something got out of line, that's the thing you got to immediately what? You got to kibosh it. You got to kibosh it. So if your money didn't work right, Money's out of line. You make it work right. Who ever told you you were under the authority of money? Come on now. <laughs> but you act like you're under the authority of money. So you feel good if you got it. You don't feel good if you don't. I'm already way ahead of y'all. Y'all ain't. Come on, you got to catch up, man. Come on. Are you with me? You're not under the authority of dead presidents. These are dead presidents. You tell money what it should do. Let me, let me, let me add this to you. You give offerings wrong. You give tithes and offerings wrong. You give it totally wrong. You give it as though you're giving money. You don't give it as though you're planting seed. And every seed knows what it is. Because we can read in Genesis 1 that it produces after its kind. Is that right? Well, if I gave money, Pastor, money isn't a real seed. So I don't want it. Watch this now. Let me ask you this question. How many of you give, how many, would you, how many of you would plant tomato seeds and to come back out and see a bunch of seeds on the dirt? Come on. Come on, anybody in here? What would you want? You want, you want, you want some tomatoes to show up. You planted the tomato seed to get some tomatoes. So why are you giving money trying to get money? Why would you ever give money to get money? Because if money is a seed, I don't want seed back. I want fruit. Ain't nobody in here. But if the money is a seed, it doesn't know what it is yet. So I tell it what it is. So when I sow this seed, this seed is for the new job. This seed is for the business that needs to advance. This seed is for the marriage that is having the problem. This seed, I now give it its properties and it must produce after it's time. You can never give an offering without praying over it. I can't throw, I ain't throwing no money in no plates. That's just throwing it away. I don't know. Because that's the dominion mandate you have. That's the dominion mandate. You, you have authority over everything. And so we can't function as though we're under authority when we're supposed to be the authority. I'm not under any authority except Jesus. 
yet I will obey all authority of the land. Isn't that amazing? I obey the authority of the land. Why? Because I understand authority. I'm, I'm like the, the centurion. I'm a man under authority. Yet I know all authority. So when I tell one to go, they go. When I tell one to come, they come. I have authority so I can be under authority. Are oh, y'all not helping me? That's why Christians should be the best, the best workers ever in the, in the history. A Christian should never be late for work. Because I'm, I'm in authority. Authority know how to be under authority. If I'm, a, if I'm late, if I'm doing all that wrong, I don't want to say an authority. Jesus. Hell just tells you, hell didn't mess with you. You don't know who you are. I am trying to get you to get this little piece so I can move on. Somebody needed that. Because that won't in my notes. Nowhere in my computer. <laughs> so the dominion mandate is where they are now. So all of this, all of all the multiplication. Matter of fact, again, if you are, if you, and, and, and if you're single, you, you don't even have to worry about this. You can just, you can just fl flow free in this stuff. But with a husband and wife, you've got to come together in oneness and mindset. And you've got to decide what needs to increase in this house. What needs to change in this house? All we have to really do is speak to it. Change. Over. It's over. It's done. Walk right away from it. I mean, I, I never said, I, there are very, I, it's very few times. I have five daughters. Matter of fact, this book is written because of what I taught my daughters. That's, that's, that's why I wrote the book. But watch this. Let me tell you something. I didn't speak to my daughters twice most of the time. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. No, 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 no. I ain't telling you two times. When I speak, you better move. It's not a good thing for me to have to t tell you again. I tell folks, we, went, we would go out to dinner. Um, we would go out to dinner with, with our children, five girls. Um, and um, if we went out as adults, my wife and I with the adults would sit at one table and we would sit the children at another table by themselves. My oldest daughter was in charge of the table. And people would come to ask us all the time, how do y'all do that? Because you know little Johnny that he's at the, at the restaurant? You met him? Yeah. yeah. Anybody, met, anybody, anybody met Johnny? Anybody been on the plane with Johnny? Johnny been on the plane too. He throwing absolute fits. And the parents don't know what to do with him. <laughs> And they would ask us, how you do that? How y'all do that? And I would tell them, I said, I'm the heavyweight champion of the world. <laughs> they look at me all funny. I said, yeah, I got the belt. <laughs> and wherever we act up is where we fight. <laughs> they don't want no fight up in here. <laughs> it was just authority. It was just understanding. Again, my wife would call me while we were, while I was, if I'm away like this, she'll call me and say, honey, the girl's not listening to me. I said, just put them around the phone. Put it on speaker. You do not want me to have to deal with you when I get home. So change. Don't let my wife tell me that you did wrong. See, one, one, one day I send, you know, that's in, it's in the book too. I, one day I send them out. Well, my wife went with, they went with their, my wife to the store. They went to the, to the shopping center with her. And um, she came back home and she was all upset. And she says, they were not listening. They were not doing what I told them. And I said to them, I said, y'all come here. Come here for a second. Y'all come here for a second. Let me talk to y'all. I said, let me ask you something. Who did you go to the mall with? And they said, um, mommy. I said, no, you didn't. You did not go to the mall with mommy. Who did you go to the mall with? They said, mommy. You did not go to the mall with mommy. <laughs> Who did you go to the mall with? 
And one of my daughters said, I don't know. <laughs> I was through right there. I could have, I, 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 all of my meanness left. Man. I, I don't know. I don't know. I thought it was mommy. But. <laughs> so, oh my goodness, that's so funny. I said, no, you went to the mall with me. That woman is me. If you mess with her, you mess with me. Therefore, you get my wrath. Because as much as I love you, I love her more. Because you are offspring. Meaning you spring off. And when you spring off, she'll still be here. So I'm going to protect her over you in any day. Now, I'm talking to five girls now. And they, they, they understand, oh, okay, this guy is not playing. Because I was talking to them from the perspective of them. I can't deal with these children from me, just her, it's them. And if you don't recognize them, you got a problem with me because you're now disrespecting me. Don't disrespect me. So when I put them around the phone, they understood. Don't play with my wife. I hurt you. And they know I'm not abusive or anything such as that, but they know I'm not playing. That's my woman. Is that making any sense? Yes. Okay, 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 good that, get that. So that's the dominion mandate. So now, it's interesting, if we go over there, let's go over there, five. Y'all better keep my time. I told you, if you don't keep my time, I'm going to be messed up. Go over chapter two. Chapter two, look at what he says. He says in chapter two, verse seven, it says, and the Lord form who? Form who? Where? of the dust of the ground and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Now here's the threefold nature of man. We get it all right here, right? He's, here's this body. Here's this body that's been formed. Matter of fact, everything else God does what? He speaks it into existence, right? Everything else he says, let there be and it was. Every animal he said, let there be. And come on, are y'all with me? So yes. But here God comes down, get into the dirt. Jesus. Come on and forms a person out of the dust, not even dirt, really. He said dust. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my, the stuff we wipe off the counter. <laughs> the stuff we wipe off the counter, he said, I'm going to make man of it. I'm not even taking, oh, y'all ain't hear me. The Lord's calling. Go ahead, woman. Go ahead. Anytime. You can interrupt me anytime you want to. <laughs> but listen to me. Close. Watch this. Are you, are you getting this? Yes. So watch. So now this, 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 this figure is standing there before God, lifeless, just abiding. And God comes up and kisses it. And the Bible says, the Ruah. Of God, the Spirit of God is breathing to man, and at the moment that the Rura is breathing to man, he becomes something that he never was before, couldn't be, and that is what? A living soul. So, because I know I'm not gonna be able to get back to this, when God came and kissed man, man became something alive. When man kissed God, it caused death. <laughs> Betray 
the Son of Man with a kiss, Judith. Oh, oh y'all not here for me. <laughs> Betray thou me with a kiss. So when man kissed God, it brought death. But when God kissed man, it brought life. Mm. And now we're told, though, in our new form, to kiss the son. All right, that's, that's a whole other thing. That, you, you know, we'll get back to that someday when I come back. So here you got this man. He was born. He's created. Where's this woman? Well, didn't he talk to both of them? Wasn't it them? Yes. So why he create him? See, because he creates him and he doesn't create her, it would give you the mindset that he might be more important to God than her. But he already talked to them. If he hadn't talked to them already, you could go to that conclusion. But he's already told them they have dominion. He already told them to multiply. He already told them they're blessed. He already told them. He's not talking just to him. So why you create him first? <laughs> well, all right, let's find out. Genesis, Genesis, come on, why is this? We over here in two. Let's go to 15. Let's go to 15. 15. It says, and the Lord took the man, took him, and put him in the garden of Eden to do two things. What? To dress it and to keep it. He told him to dress it and to keep it. And this, these, it's, it's amazing because some Bibles translate dress to cultivate. Some, some Bibles translate dress to tin or to till or to plant even. But everything was there, wasn't it? There was nothing to cultivate. There was nothing to tin. Did, wasn't everything here? And wasn't it producing after his own kind? So he didn't have nothing to do. And the other thing I got to do for you is I got to get you out of that backyard garden. Because <laughs> in your brain, you went to Sunday school and they put you in a backyard garden with two naked people running around with leaves on. <laughs> Isn't that where they put you in Sunday school? And that imagery just can stay in your mind of that backyard garden. Like you can be in the, this thing had four rivers going through it. There are four rivers going through the thing. There can't be no backyard garden. If you had a backyard with four rivers going through it, how are you going to live in the house? Okay, come on. So this thing is a whole continent. How are you going to tend to a whole continent? See, it's been in the Bible, we just won't read it. And then, and then come from a position of understanding. This thing is huge. Yes. Ain't nobody gonna be able to, look, even Adam don't need to deal with that. God said, I already got this, I done this. Ain't asking you to do nothing. Matter of fact, there is no death. Come on. Come on. Why? There's no sin. And Paul tells you what, the wages of sin is death. So death doesn't come on the earth until the fall. So man produced sin. God didn't. Or man produced death. Let me put it that way. There was no death. So that means nothing was dying. See, that's hard for, a, you got to go to the pre-fall. Nothing dies. An apple doesn't even rotten. A flower never withers. Grass never turns brown. Nothing dies. There is no death on the earth. Ever since we've been living, ever since we've been living, we said death is a part of life. Because it is. Because of the fall. But before the fall, Adam wouldn't say that. Life is a part of life. So if there's nothing done, there's nothing to rake up. <laughs> see, every time you see a leaf fall from a tree, you realize the fall. Right. 
It tells you you're living in a fallen world. Just one leaf falling to the ground says you're living in a fallen world. Come on, you're having to cut grass says I'm living in a fallen world. Y'all not here. Come on, uh, rain tell you you're living in a fallen world. <laughs> there was no rain. <laughs> Water came up from the ground, the mist took care of everything. That was no rain. So when you see a raindrop, you go, I'm living in a fallen world. You know that was no snow and you should want that. <laughs> Lord God, it's too much snow in Michigan. That's the only, only part of this state I can't handle. Jesus. And everybody wants me to come here when it's cold. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, sir. We see one flake in Charlotte, the whole city's shut down. One flake on the north side of Charlotte. Everybody go to the store and buy all the bread and, and, and milk. <laughs> Never understood that in all days of my life. What? <laughs> this word dress right here doesn't mean to tend, doesn't mean to plan, doesn't mean to cultivate, doesn't mean any of that. doesn't need to be because that was, there was nothing to do. There was nothing to do. The word there means work. And it cannot mean work in this context. And the reason why it could not mean work in this context because God cursed Adam and the curse was to work. And if work was, al if work was already given, he couldn't curse it because he, he gave it in the blessing. I'm just taking our time because I know some of this stuff can come from different angles. You ain't heard it this way. So are you getting this? Are you tracking with me? So work, work became, by the sweat of your brow, you shall now work. So work could not, but the word there, avad, which is A-V-A-D, A-V-A-D in the Hebrew means to work. And uh, uh, any, anybody that's, 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 that's Jewish or Hebrew will say avad, and they're talking about their work. But the extended definition is worship. The extended definition is Levitical worship, actually. And it means that Adam was placed in the garden so that he could worship God because there was not another creature on the planet that could do so. And he was placed there before he's given the woman so that he doesn't have any distractions whatsoever and he would know his first estate in the earth was to worship God and not deal with his woman. Are you getting this? So when I talk to men, I talk to men about the fact that they are the first worshipers who's supposed to be on the earth and is on the earth and they should act like it but most men don't act like they're true worshipers. Most men are too cool to worship. Oh, yeah, helping me. Most men are too reserved to worship and to let themselves go. <laughs> but that's why God created him first, so that he could have this relationship with him, so that he could worship first. I mean, you know, I mean, and I had people ask me all the time, you know, with the five girls. And, I, and again, if I put their picture up, I show you my daughters. I have some good looking girls. There's some pretty girls. I have some good looking women in my house. We really do. That's because their mama good looking. Praise God. Ain't got nothing to do with me. It had to do with their mama. My, my, my wife fine. Glory to God. She is. She's fine. She's fine. She's fine. She ain't fine. <laughs> so this is the deal they said to me too I, man I bet you got a big gun at home I don't need no gun man I don't need a gun he said yeah man come on them. I said no when the sniffers come around <laughs> yeah, when it, 
I don't mind the sniffers coming around. That's not a problem. Matter of fact, I'm not really their problem. My wife is their problem. My wife is their problem. We had a young man to come to our house to pick up one, one pick up Crystal, actually, um, to go out to the movies or something. And this brother made the mistake of blowing her his horn for my daughter to come outside to meet him in the car. And when I, <laughs> when I heard the horn, I didn't go to talk to the boy. I ran to get Joandra. <laughs> Girl, stop. She said, no, he did not. <laughs> oh, Lord, boy, you just don't know you're in trouble. And it wasn't me that read him the ride act. It was my wife. So everybody, because she got a little sloth voice, and they think she's the sweetest thing in the world until you cross her. And then I, I, I just laugh at myself. I ain't have to. All right? So everybody thought I was the mean one. I was not the mean one. You had to watch out for her with those girls. But what happened is I would say to them, no, this is not what needs to happen. I don't need a gun. I just need the young man to be able to go with me if he says, look, I want to marry your daughter. Great. Come on, go with me. We're going into the basement. <laughs> I don't have no guns. I'm not going to fight you. I'm not going to do anything. But for the next hour, you're going to lead me in worship. If you can't lead me in worship for the next hour, then the answer is no. And the answer is no, not because I'm being mean to you, but you can't do what I do. If you, can't, if you can't lead me in worship for an hour, and I can lead my daughter in worship for an hour, why would I give, you, give her to you? The criteria is your worship life. Because that was the criteria in the garden. <laughs> you see, you see, you li listen, man, listen, listen. Oh, God, there's so much, so much to tell you. Am I still on the first slide? <laughs> I am still on the first slide. That's good. See, now, that brother's worshiping God, ain't he? The reason why he's worshiping God is because he know he married up. That's why he married worshiping God. He? <laughs> he know he married way up. He got to worship God. But I want, you, I want you to get this for a second. The Bible says, the Bible clearly says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. praise. Now, so all that's out of court now. The gate, the out of court. Now, it's interesting too because most Christians that I talk to think because praise is in the Bible and all that, that praise belongs to the church. Praise doesn't belong to the church. Praise belongs to anything that's breathing. <laughs> let everything that have uh, let everything that have breath we can stop right there so everything that have breath must praise that's the, the criteria for praise is breath which is why the rappers and the, 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 the singers on the reward show said I want to thank God for this They gave, thank God for my talent thank God for this, this reward and without him come on and you will go but you were just cursing in the song and you can say to the woman, you ain't got no clothes on up there, but you're thanking God. And you can get mad at her because she's thanking God. But she has to thank God because she has breath. breath. Now you understand what Jesus said when he came into the city and they were crying Hosanna. And they would say, shut them up. He said, no, if they shut up, then what? The very rocks will cry out. Why will the rocks cry out? He says, now I will take something that doesn't have breath. Something that doesn't have breath going to praise me if the things with breath don't. See, it makes sense, doesn't it? See, see, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So if you have breath, you got to praise. But the criteria for worship is spirit and truth. The criteria for worship has nothing to do with breath. 
which is why most Christians don't know how to worship. You go to you go to most you go to a lot of services and you find them jumping around, getting sweaty, doing aerobics. Come on, are you with me? As long as the, long as they bouncing up and down, they having a fall. But the worship session don't have the same intensity. We can sing the song and still not be a worshiper. There's a level of intensity that has to come. The same level of intensity for praise needs to be for worship, but you usually don't find it. And the person that's supposed to lead it is, uh, is the man. <laughs> Men are supposed to be violent in worship. Yeah. Wow. Not just... <laughs> Not just at church, but also at home. Because what God says is not only to, to, to dress that God, and he told him also to do what? Keep it. He said, keep it. That word is Shema, which is S-H-A-M-A-R. Shema, that word means to keep, protect. So what is he protecting? He's protecting the place of his worship. <laughs> Which is what you do. You do the same. You protect the place of your worship. See, you're not going to let anything happen wrong in here when you're in worship. If, there, if, if something break off wrong, you're going to move them out. Why? Because this is, the, this is the place that we are going to worship God and we ain't letting nothing else come in here and cause no problems. We're not going to put on our screen the Playboy channel. Why aren't we putting the Playboy channel on our screen? Because this is the place of worship. We're not going to put BET up there for you black folk that's in here. <laughs> because this is the place of worship. We're not even going to put VH1 up here for you white folk that's in here. Because <laughs> it's the place of what? Worship. Glory to God. So wait a minute now. If we're gonna, if this is the place that we're gonna put tag, because this is the place of worship, we can't look at that kind of stuff here. We can't allow those kind of things to break out in here. Then my question to most Christians is, how does that stuff play at your house? How can it play at your house? How can all of that kind of stuff play at your house? Because your house now is not. I ain't nobody helping me. Your house has now been declared not a place. So when hell shows up, he came to the right house. The reason why he doesn't invade our churches that way is because he knows that's not his house. But he can invade your house because you set it up for him. Hello. <laughs> it's just that simple. It's not difficult. And so Adam had to protect his place of worship. He had to make sure that he was worshiping. And he protected his place of worship. And then all of a sudden, God, while he's into this place with God, enjoying this place with God, Adam is not stupid, by the way. He names all the animals. I think you know this, don't you? Yeah. We'll deal with that later, probably after lunch. He, deals, he names all these animals. Wait a minute. If he names all these animals, you know he's not stupid. So he also know that there's a male and female for every animal. And if it's a male and female for every animal, and I'm only the male, then there's got to be a female coming. The only thing he didn't have the control of, he knew it was coming, but he didn't know when. Because it was not his determination when. That belonged to God. <laughs> when she comes, it's, his, it's God's business, not mine. So I've got to go after him and nothing else. I've got to dress the place so that he can come down in the cool of the day 
and then, come on, he can bask in the place where I've, I've met. See, that's why my house got to be full of worship. My car got to be full of worship. My job got to be full of worship. Everywhere I go, I dress it so that God can come into it. I dress every place for God. I'm dressing it. God, come on, I've got it dressed. It's set up. It is decorated for you. Come on, it is set for you. If you have company coming over, is anybody cleaning up? Goodness, people come in my house, I say, honey, the president ain't coming. <laughs> she got me doing baseboards and the president ain't coming. They know who we are, I know them. No, we're gonna clean up. Well, if we're gonna clean up for a guest to come to my house. Have I dressed it for my God to come? Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God says, Thank you, Lord. you see, he talked to the Elohim, Thank you, Jesus. the Elohim, the Elohim. He talks to the Elohim and he says to them, he says, it's not good. This is the first time we ever heard that because everything else, God says, it is good. And then the first time he says, it is not good that man be alone. My God. We will make him a help meet, which, listen to me close. I'm not just dealing with versions of Bibles, King James versus something else, but mate is not right. He didn't create a help mate. He created a help meet. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. Now watch, I want you to understand now. So why did God create the woman. Now you should know. He said it's not good that man should be alone. You said it, woman. God said it loud to, so the rest of the body can hear what you said. That's it. Ah. She didn't, he didn't create her primarily for him. Yet he's going to benefit greatly. He created her for himself. so that she could join in with his worship. Y'all gotta hear me. Yes. So, yes. so now, the man and the woman who have all that dominion, all that authority, all of that multiplication of possibility, because guess what? Adam also knows there is no multiplication until that woman get there. There is no way to multiply anything until she comes, right? No replenishing, no none of that going to happen until the woman gets there. So he understands that. But when the, she gets there, she doesn't get there to do that first. She gets there to worship with him first. So the first estate for them together is worship. All of the earth hears a sound. This is a different sound now. Here's a sound that they had not heard yet. Even when Adam is worshiping God and saying, you are everything, you are all, you are worthy of all honor and all glory. You are the magnificent God. Now one has come alongside him that's now joined with them with that chorus. And now both of them are lifting their voices and lifting their worship to God. And the earth had never heard that sound before. That blended sound of worship had never been on the earth ever before. That worship was the place of their authority. That worship, that's where, they, that's where they walk into their authority. The authority happened from the place of their worship. It didn't happen because they had been given an, a mandate. It happened because they were worshiping God from a place that nobody else had ever worshiped God from. And the earth was now being filled with a sound that only heaven had heard before. Hallelujah. And it's my belief, it is my belief that hell said, hell says, we got to stop that. Why? Because he was responsible for that sound. And God had taken dirt. God had taken dirt and allowed dirt to do what he was doing.
And he said, oh, no, we're going to stop this. We're going to stop this. We got we to gotta do something to hinder this. We cannot allow this to continue. He came after their worship. Yes. He won't come in after taking over the earth. He was coming after their worship. How do you know Bishop Jackson, he was coming after their worship? Because when he meets Jesus and he's in the wilderness, the thing that he's after was not Jesus to pray to him. He didn't ask Jesus to fast. He didn't ask Jesus to do anything, but I want you to bow down and I want you to worship. And if Satan wants worship, it must be real important to God. He only wants what belongs to God. And so if you learn just what I've told you so far, which I'm about a thousand miles from where I need to be. Your whole life, your whole life's increase. Your whole life increase. Come on, man. We got talk about who was created to help worship. So this woman was created. A woman is created to help worship. Um, God said something again to that we have <laughs> it's so much in this, in this stuff that I think we have we've missed and, um, and I'm just grateful to the Lord for revealing some of it. Um, not better than anyone, but just thank God for the revelation. Amen. Amen. Um, you go back to Genesis um, 2. When you look at verse 18, um, it, is, it is explosive. It really is explosive. He says, um, and God says, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And again, I, I, I want you to Know that is help meet, M-E-E-T, it's not help, help mate. But the first thing that you notice, he says, he says, it's not good that man should be alone. What he didn't say is very important to understand as well. He didn't say man was lonely. Did you notice that? He didn't say it's not good for man to be lonely. It, it, it wasn't, he, wasn't, he wasn't lonely at all. Um, he was alone, but he wasn't lonely. It is like unto Moses on the mountain with God for 40 days and 40 nights. Alone, never lonely. One of the things I say to singles all the time is that if you think you're going to get married and it's going to solve loneliness. Hello, somebody. Because I tell folk all the time, look, I'm married, been married for 34 years. Praise God. Glory to God. But if my wife got married not to be <laughs> lonely, she's right now lonely because I'm not there. Right. You see? And I'm traveling all over, all over the place. So she has to have a relationship with God that will keep loneliness from ever entering. Right. Even though she's alone, she's not lonely. Because when you have a vital relationship with God, you can never be lonely. And so when you, when, you, when you find loneliness in a person's life, you find the absence of God. I say that slow. <laughs> when you're lonely, you got the absence of God. Because you can never be with God and be lonely. Never. He fills every gap. He fills every place. And we'll say all that stuff in church and then act like it's not true when we're by ourselves. But I am alone. I can be alone. I'm alone this weekend in my, in my hotel room, but I'm not lonely. Is that making any sense? Okay. Be because of the vital relationship I have with the Father. Okay. And so he was alone not lonely because of the worship relationship he had with God. And so God says it's not good for him to be alone and worship. We will make him a help meet. Now, that is an amazing word. The word there for help meet in the Hebrew, one word is, um, for, is the word for help, 
with its eza, E-Z-A-R, I think it is. But the next word is meat, which is the word that is most important, is nijed. <laughs> nijed. Notice, notice what the word meat means. It means in front of, straightforward before, in the sight of. Wow, really? Really? Okay, so, demonstration. Y'all married, right? Come. Okay, sir, here in front of me, could you stand and face me, sir? Madam, there beside this man, y'all getting married? All right, so this is important for you to understand. There's a whole lot of stuff that, that again, that's happening in the church world that we've missed, but I'm going to help you right now. Is that all right? All right, you've been, how many of you have been to a marriage ceremony before? Anybody been to a marriage ceremony before? You got all dressed up, duded up, and all that good stuff, all right? Right? Is that right? Okay, when you came to the marriage ceremony out in the front in the lobby, there were ushers. Is that right? There was somebody out there that asked you a very vital question. What was that question they asked you? Oh, bride or groom, are you here because of the bride or are you here because of the groom? Is that right? Well, um, Apostle, I need you to, sir. Could you come and sit where I was sitting, if you would, please? I need you there for a second, sir. Thank you so very much. All right. All right. All right. So now what happened in this ceremony is um, she walked the aisle. Is that right? Now, the only person that was allowed to see her was her father. Okay. The only man that was allowed to see her was her father before he gets to see her, even though he knows who she is. Isn't that right? Well, remember, this is the same thing that's going to happen in this ceremony that when God created this woman. When God creates this woman, remember, he's going to take his side. Okay, I'm giving you, he's going to take his side and he's going to create this woman and he's going to hang out with this woman alone. We, my guess, this is me, okay? Because you don't have no Bible for this, but this is me, but I think I can back it up with Bible. I believe that God spent three days with her. And the reason why I believe she, he spent three days with her is because Jesus spent three days in the, in the ground. Okay. Sleep. I'm not basing it on her, I'm basing it on yeah. Jesus being asleep for three days and he was sleep. I believe he slept for three days before he gets to see the resurrected version of himself. Yeah, that's, this is me. And don't go out here and tell nobody and they be rebuking you. But I think I got Bible that can help me. Did you understand, did you understand what I said? All right, good. So now, when God brings her, now I'm, I'm not, when God brings her, it's as though the father is walking her down the aisle. Is that right? Well, he, he wakes out of sleep and he sees this beautiful woman. All right? Is, is that, yeah, everybody good with me? So that's why he doesn't, he doesn't go see her. He's waiting for her, for her to be presented by her father. So he's here waiting for the presentation. Okay? So, 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 so she's being presented to him. All right? With me? All right. Now, you got to stay here for a minute. Are y'all good? All right, so now this is the thing I need you to understand. What, you, what most of you clearly don't understand in North America or in, the, or in the West is the fact of who wedding this is. You don't know who wedding this is, and because you haven't known who wedding it is, you don't, uh, you don't approach it right. You don't approach it right, and you don't give it the importance that it really needs to be. And then the person whose wedding it is don't function in the way that they need to function in the responsibility of the wedding. I done said a whole lot to you right there. What I want to let you know is, excuse me, woman of God, this is not her wedding. This does not belong to her. This entire wedding belonged to him. (laughs) 
This is his wedding. This is not her wedding. I don't care how many dresses you look on TV and if I'm going if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna buy the dress or I ain't gonna buy the dress, that's that's what her job is is to get get you dude it up and buy the dress. But it's his wedding. Okay, so stay there for a second, y'all. I'm I'm gonna move away from you for a minute. I'm coming back to you. Guess what? You gonna get married to a man named Jesus. Whose wedding is it? I ain't got nobody helping me. Ain't nobody helping me. Ain't nobody going to help me. I'm just going to get... <laughs> Whose wedding is it? Oh, it's his wedding. Well, where is it going to be? You don't know. When is it going to be? You don't know that either. Where you going to live? You don't know that either. All you know is that you got to get ready for the wedding. Your job as his bride is to get ready to be dressed, have oil in the lamp, so when he shows up for his wedding, you ready to go. But in North America and West, in the West, y'all think this, women think this is all about them. I ain't mad at you. I, I am not mad at you. Remember, the other piece, the other reason why this is so important is because when the wedding becomes about her, listen to this. This is, this is an amazing statement I'm about to make to you because it doesn't make sense in, until I explain it. She loses value. <laughs> Are y'all getting this? Really? When it's about him, she gains value. Why? Because as a man, his responsibility was to come to me as a, I'm making him the father, come here man of God, to go to this man as the father and determine how much, how much he had to pay to gain her hand. So her hand, her hand was was valuable and he had to see the value and had to pay it before he could have her. Because it's his wedding. So he had to pay. And had to pay the father. But in the West, the father is paying to give away his daughter. So in essence, she loses value. Can you get back in place? Sit back down. Sir. Are you getting that with me? If I got to pay to give her away, so I'm, valuing, so I'm now giving you value. Not value on my woman or on my daughter. Y'all getting this with me so far? Because this is what happened that this this presentation, that's what's going on here. This thing is serious. And you've seen it in weddings and didn't even know what we were looking at. And so he's waiting. He's waiting for the one that he has already valued. And she comes and presents herself. Now, when they are here, this is very important. She is here in a position that is so important for us to understand. Again, she's been here this whole time and we haven't seen it or, or really just taking time to look at it. They are positioned in such a way that, the, that I know from math, I know from positioning that everything that's to the right of anything loses power. I know anything that's to the right is lesser in power than anything to the left, which is why Jesus is seated at the of the Father. He's not just sitting there just to be sitting there. He's sitting there because the father is everything. Yes. The book starts with the father. I'm the son. Are you with me here? That's why a man will hang out with a brother and we, I come up and say, hey man, who's that? He said, brother, this is my right hand man. What did he, what did he just say? Mm. I'm the man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm the man. This is my right hand man, but I'm the man. Mm. Every man in here know what I'm talking about. Come on, is that making any sense? 
Oh, oh, that's my bro. He hanging out with me. That means he's lesser than I am. Don't go to him for anything. Come to me. Am I talking to the, am I talking right, right? So everything that's to the right is lesser in power. Where is he to her? Oh God, my Jesus. He is at her right hand. That means as they stand right there in front of that person that's going to marry her, marry them, she's greater in this union right now. You've been looking at this your whole life and then you know you're looking at it, right? She's greater in authority right now. Why is she greater in authority right now? She's greater in authority right now because she's under the authority still of her And her father is greater than him. Because right now, she has her father's name. And as long as she has her father's name, he can't tell her to do nothing. Is that making any sense? And if she decides, I'm not going to do this, I don't want to go, I, I came all the way here, but I changed my mind. She goes back under the authority of her father. He has no rights to her at all. Are y'all with me so far? Now, now this, is, this, is, this is crazy. This is crazy. So, so, so I married them. Come on, what was your, what was your maiden name? Battle. I'm glad you had a, because sometimes I have people up here, they have them. <laughs> Lord Jesus. <laughs> so battle is easy. So they get married, right? And I say to them, now turn and face the audience. Oh my God. So, what, so what's your married name? What's your last name? Franklin. Franklin. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> when they turn, what happened? Oh, positions changed. She's now to the right. Now, this is not because she decreased or he became her greater. They just became, say it loud. They just became... Because they just became them. They just became them, and no longer is she under her name. So her father now loses authority in this relationship because his name in is battle. And I present to you, Mr. and Mrs. I didn't say nothing about no battle, did I? My question then is, how is it that women can carry their father's name? Come on, teach it. Teach it. Come on. See that. When they became them. Oh, Jesus. Because you don't understand what's going on here. A woman can't hyphenate her name and keep her daddy name. because she became them. If she keeps her daddy name, could you stand up with me, sir? Then go on that side, sir. When I present them, he got to go home with them. Is, is that happening? It ain't happening. They ain't, ain't bringing daddy home, are we? You don't want to go. <laughs> are you getting this with me? So as a result of them becoming them, they are presented to the generation as a new person. Matter of fact, this person has never existed. You can go past, man of God. This person has never existed in the earth today. That's a brand new person. There has never been a Mr. and Mrs. Franklin in the earth. Right in front of your eyes, you saw death occur. You saw two people die and turn and become a new person as them. So they have to function under the name of them so they can have the authority of them. 
And you've been all in wedding ceremonies. Thought it was all about her. Ain't never been about her. You, did you learn anything right there? Yes. Not finished with you. Not finished with you. Oh, y'all, I ain't tell y'all go nowhere. Yes. Ain't it? I'm going all and sat down like I'm finished. No, going, going to the dim position. All right. But this word right here, God says, I'm going to create her so she can worship with you, but she's going to be out in front? So what have you heard about a woman? You heard that behind, could you get behind this man, please? Behind every, come on, somebody help me. Behind every good man, there's a good woman. Right? You heard that? I don't, I don't want you to raise your hand and tell me you said it. But some of you have repeated that lie. That's a lie from hell. That, that, that's from the pit of hell. God did not design her to be behind him and to make him great. God designed her as them. And if she's behind her, him making him great, can I get to her? And he not see me? Her back is exposed. So he can't even protect her at the level because she's back here making him great while hell is attacking her. Now, he, now he's all that, but she's struggling. Now, you can go back beside him. Well, the women's liberals will say, well, that's because she's shown, she don't supposed to be behind him. She's supposed to be beside him. Well, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Oneness is greater than equality. I got to bring you to equality mean you were less than. That's not part of my body to think is less than. It's one body. But can I still get to her? Stand in front. This is the position just she's supposed to be in. This position doesn't have anything to do with, with her leading. This position doesn't have anything to do with her leading the union. It has to do with her being protected and the position of worship. So she's supposed to be out in front of, and she's not only out in front just to be out in front, she's out in front announcing to the generation their purpose. She's announcing to the generation who they are supposed to be and how they're supposed to be, a, be, be about it. That's her position is to announce this is where we are. This is where we're going. This is why we're going there. He, you would say, well, his back is exposed now. From this position, the Bible tells me that God becomes his real reward. So he never have to deal with his back as they are going forward. But is she protected now? He sees everything that's going to happen under her and hell can't attack her because it's somebody that got her back. Amen? You may be seated now. Thank you. She is the help me. So I'm looking at the State of the Union address one night. And I'm looking at the State of the Union address, and um, there was a, the sergeant in arms of the Congress at the time was um, Mr. Living Good, Living All Good, Living Good, Living All Good, or something like that. It's an interesting name. And he comes into the, the door of the Congress, and he stands there, and behind him is the president. And he says, ladies and gentlemen of the Congress, the president of the United States of America, and walks out in front of the president. And when that happens, I go, oh my God, that's it. That's the wife. Uh, 
announcing to the generation. This is our design presence and purpose in the earth. This is who we are. And this is what we're supposed to do. And when she does that, he will do everything she wants done. Are y'all here with me? It's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing. God didn't make any mistakes in this. It is perfectly designed. <laughs> and the reason why I believe that homosexuality has had such an inroad in our society is because we don't know what marriage is supposed to look like. <laughs> Since we got it all messed up, Anybody can come in and screw it up further because we got it a mess. Hello. And again, he snuck stuff in like the hyphenated names. And I find hyphenated names all over the church. I said, why are your name hyphenated? Don't you understand you're not one if you're hyphenated? Oh, you follow Hollywood, huh? Hollywood hyphenated their name, so you're going to hyphenate yours. Oh, you ain't going to help me. <laughs> when you hyphenated, you're not one. It's not them. You can keep it if you want to, but it's not them. And the problem that you're having in your marriage has to do with not being them. Hmm. Okay, I ain't going to beat that horse. I'm just going to leave that alone. Let me take you back to something, though. You, God took his rib, right? Took his side, actually. The, whole, the Bible says took his whole side. Took his whole side. Well, again, we, we all know, we clearly know now that, you know, we've, we've done the research. We know that Adam, you know, everybody want to deal with, it was part of Africa or whatever. But we know Adam wasn't black. We clearly know that. We clearly know that now. And this sign, the, the Bible tells us that because there is no black man that's going to give up a rib. So as a result of that. <laughs> no, that ain't happening. Yeah, that ain't happening. That ain't happening. That just ain't happening. Just ain't happening. We <laughs> we'll, give, we'll give up an arm. I ain't giving up no ribs. Lord, you can have this leg, you can have this leg too. You ain't giving up no ribs. <laughs> but God takes that side and creates this woman. Now, this is an amazing thing. Because we already seen how God created him. What did he do? Came down and played in the dust. Man became a living soul. But God so valued the woman that he didn't repeat the process. So he did not create her from dirt. That's how valuable she is. He created her from his side. <laughs> That's crazy. So therefore, my piece is, I think you can go to, go to the next slide or something. You go to the next two slides. Watch this. You cannot play in dirt. I'm coming in. You cannot. Men. Men. Men love dirt. So you can't act like dirt. If you act like dirt, you lose your value. You can never regain your value from a man who has gotten you to dirt level. And all he does when he meets you is to try to get you to his level. If he can get you down to the dirt level, that's the way you're going to stay. You can say, oh, he don't, he don't treat me well. You, well you, he got you where he wanted you. You can't get out of there. You have, to, you have to stay out of the dirt. 
If he brought you there, leave him alone because he won't, he won't change his mind. Ain't nobody helping me. I'm trying to get some help. Are you getting this with me? Come on, is, am, I telling, am, I, am I telling the truth? Yes. Do I have a man in the house that will say amen? amen. <laughs> he loves dirt. So since you weren't created from dirt, you shouldn't act like dirt. And then second, you should never be treated like dirt. So if you're not dirt, you can't allow any man to treat you like dirt. Because God had a greater value on you that he wouldn't even come down and do the same thing he did for the man. Hmm. That's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> Go to the next slide, sir. Um, I'm trying to move forward. Go to the next slide, sir. <laughs> so one person, one name, the miracle Overlook, I showed you that turn face to face to the Lord. I told you that I showed you that. I want I took you fast, so then I wanted to go. I no, I took you fast so I could get through these slides. The reason why I told you also that this it wasn't her it wasn't her wedding is because she's a good thing found. The Bible says the man who finds a wife finds a good thing. How are you going to be the good thing found and be the one that did the finding? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you, can't, you can't be both. You're either the jewel, you're either the jewel or you're the jeweler. Which one are you? <laughs> you're the jewel. You're the jewel. You got to be searched for. You got to be, you got, listen, it is never your, it's never the job of the woman to pursue the man. You do not pursue any man. Every man must pursue you. Because if you pursue him, you're devalued. He never tells you that. But in his mind, he knows he's the most valuable thing. You coming after me. You giving me your money. I'm driving your car. I'm laying up in your house. So who's the valuable one here? The one that's paying. Recognize the other one as valuable. Adam was here worshiping, already had something to do before the woman ever comes on the scene. If he doesn't have anything, he keep moving until he gets something. Y'all ain't going to help me. I know it's, it sounds real old-fashioned, doesn't it? Not old-fashioned, it's just biblical principle. He's got to be first. And once he's first, you can, I can join to that. What are you joining to? You see? I'm joining to his worship. Well, if he's, first, if he's got that, what else does he have? I tell people all the time, I tell young couples this all the time, I say, I got married at least three years too soon. At least. I, at least. My wife had to suffer. <laughs> I was broke as broke could be. I couldn't holler and hold two coins together. But I had love. We struggle like a rascal. We shouldn't have, we shouldn't have, that should have never happened. So because I understand that, I don't let other young people go through the same thing. Oh, no, no, no question. Because look, I tell, I says in, 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 my, in my counseling session, especially with young people, I said, look, especially with singles, I said, look, tell me something. Bruh, I'm not talking to her, just you. Give me a three to five year plan on where you're going to be in the next three to five years. That does not include her salary. Her salary can be graven to you, but it does not include her salary. Why? Because she is in the position to receive. 
the man is in the position of the giver. Oh, y'all not going to help me, man. Is this, too, is this too deep? Am I going too deep, man? Of God? Come on. Is this making any sense? Come on. Come on. He's the giver. Your anatomy tells you this. This is, this isn't difficult. This is basic. This is basic. Your anatomy says that the woman is the receiver and the man is in the story. The woman gives once she has received. She receives seed and gives birth. But she don't give until she receives. You do not need to be given first. (laughs) Now, because I preach this so much, my wife is an expert. (laughs) My wife is skilled. She has major skills in this area. She knows that it is my job to take care of her, not her job to take care of me. She lives from that mindset no matter what. My wife is spoiled at a level that if she was food in a refrigerator, it would have been thrown out (laughs) years ago. She's rotten. I'm talking about rotten. All of my daughters say, look, if I could come back as somebody, I'll come back as my mama. (laughs) I'm just telling you, because why? She she heard the message. This is all about you. Okay, so let me give you a born Bible. Let me not let you think this is my opinion. I told you everything I'm telling you is Bible. So guess what? Husbands, love your wives. Even. Somebody going to help me. As Christ loved the church and, I can't hear, and what? Come on, talk to me loud and what? Gave himself for it. Now, what did she do? Wow. So all she did was receive what he gave and became born again. Gave her life. Once I receive, I can give. (laughs) It's his job to give. It's your job to receive. Again, I just destroyed homosexuality. Didn't even mention it. Come on, you got to think about it. I'm going to destroy it another time soon, but I just destroyed it and didn't even mention it. Because a man have no way to receive. Because I'm getting ready to go there in a moment. It's not, not any way for him to receive. You say, oh, yes, he can. No, he can't. It's not designed for receiving. I could, you know, if, if, if it was real grown people on your hill, I could take you somewhere else too, but I'm not. I'm going to leave you right there for right now, okay? I'm going to leave you right there for right now. That's all I'm going to do. You get it? Are y'all, are y'all with me? So now I want you to, you got, you, got to, you got to get this, man, because what's happening is when I learned that, I realized, okay, oh, by the way, <laughs> this is crazy. Again, I'm going to take something from women that women will hold on to most of the time and give it back to the person who's supposed to have it, which is the man. And then when you understand it, you will now be better off. See, love is, love is only stewarded by the man. Everybody's called to love, but that's not what the Bible says. Husbands, show me a place where it says wives love their husbands. 
Show me one place that it says, wives, love your husband. Matter of fact, it says, the aged women will teach the woman to love her husband and to love her children. That's crazy right there. <laughs> the aged women got to teach me to love my children? She's not even, he's not even, God said, I'm not putting none of that on you. All the love belongs to him because love only gives. Lust takes. You met him when he told you, if you love me, then you will lay with me. That won't no love. That was what? That was lust. He was lusting you, calling it love. So in order to take over dominion, you have to trick him, right? That's what he was doing. He tricked you so that he could lay with you from a lustful mindset, and you thought he loved you. Mm. <laughs> okay. All right. What time do I end? <laughs> I do. That is true. That is true. You're absolutely right about that. You are surely right about that. <laughs> Two o'clock? Okay, good. Okay, two o'clock. Uh, I, got, I got my clock right down here. So let me take you a little faster now. Let me take you a little faster now. It's interesting. Um, chapter two, you still into? I don't know what slide I'm on over there, bro. I done moved past all my slides. <laughs> look what he says. Look what, look, what, look what he says. Look what Adam says. Adam says to his one, this woman, he says, um, hmm, uh, he says, God, he says, no. And Adam said in verse 23, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, for she shall be, she shall be called what? Because she was done, she done what? Was taken out of man. Man, goodness. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Now listen to me close. Let me help, let me help you here. So you're gonna stand. I'm on, I got several things to tell you in verse 23, but 24, he says, a man shall cleave unto his wife. Again, knows where the weight is. It's on the brethren. See, this is the thing about the, the value, the, to get a woman to value herself. You gotta put the weight where it belongs so that you can be valued. He says, a man shall cleave unto his wife. Now, cleaving is usually seen with boyfriends, not husbands. God did not tell boyfriends to cleave. And, and a single woman can't require the boyfriend to cleave. The single woman don't have any rights to the boyfriend, nor does the boyfriend have any rights to the girlfriend. Because they got different names. <laughs> When we come into an espousal mentality, the espousal mentality is so that, listen to me close, we can get to the place of marriage. So the espousal mentality, an espousal mentality, you're under the covering of a father or two. You cannot be in an espousal relationship without the father's involvement. But you can date without a father. <laughs> you can date and have no father involved at all. But if you're in a spousal, fathers need to be involved. And if you say, I don't have a natural father, then you need a spiritual one. Yes. Yes. Some, some father need to be involved. You know why? Men do not listen to women. They just don't until you become a spousal or and you get a spouse, then you know, I teach you how to make him listen. I'm gonna show you that in a moment. <laughs> but they don't listen. What is what is what what do you hear women say most of the time? Come on, say it loud. 
he ain't gonna get mad. Come on, they, men don't listen to me. They don't. They listen to other men. See, I can get, I can get a man to do something that, that a woman don't get to do. Oh, you ain't hear me. My, my, daughter, my daughter says it about my son-in-law sometimes. She says, I told him that. <laughs> Y'all ain't hear me. I told him the same thing, daddy. But when I told him, he did it. Because I know how to tell him for one. <laughs> Amen. I know how to communicate with the bruh. We can talk different than you can talk. And he's going to do what I say. Well, why are you listening to you and he ain't listening to me? Well, I'll teach you how to make him listen. But men listen to other men. Because we've been trained that from a child. We've been trained how to submit from a child to other men. Sports, military, business. Come on. Are y'all with me? fraternity, whatever. We've been taught how to submit to other men, so we know how to do that. We got that relationship already. And it's so interesting that God tells you, in Ephesians 5, God tells men to love, not to submit. And tell the woman to submit, not to love. Because see, a woman will love a knucklehead. Y'all know y'all will. Y'all love a brother that ain't got nothing going for him at all. Knucklehead. <laughs> but I love him. <laughs> Am I talking to the right people? Because you just have that in you, but God told you to do the opposite. He told you to submit. He told him to love. Neither one of us have that as our primary. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Where did Charles go when you need him, man? I need, need a song. So what? So husbands should cleave, but most husbands don't cleave. Most husbands are not running behind that woman anymore. Most husbands treat her like big game. The head is up on the wall. We only talk about, we only talk about the hunt and the romanticizing of the hunt. Yeah. But we, 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 ain't, we ain't chasing that, that deer no more because the head up on the wall. Why isn't he chasing after me anymore? He's supposed to be running after you, chasing you down. Can't get enough yeah. of you. Yeah. Got to have more of you. Where are you, girl? Yes, right. Y'all crazy, y'all crazy. You can count on your one hand how many men you know that is head over heels in love with their wives. That's chasing after her. That she has to say, boy, leave me alone. Leave me alone, leave me alone. <laughs> Most women we find now says that they have to do the chasing. Because he's satisfied just to live with you. But not when he was the boyfriend. When he was the boyfriend, he couldn't get off the phone with you. Sending you letters. Roses at work. I ain't nobody helping me. Because <laughs> I'm on the chase right now. And while I'm on the chase, see, but that's not what Adam said. Adam says, no, 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 the husband's going to cleave. Going to cleave, going to cleave. So let me go back. He says, she shall be called what? Shall be called what? Oh, she shall be called a man because she came out of man. Wasn't she? I said she has to be called a man because she came out of man. She can't be called something different. She came from man, so she's got to be a man. But she's a man who has a womb. 
So she's a womb man. Now, let me help you with that. God did not give that woman a womb so that the man could play with her. The womb was not primarily designed, again, for the man. He benefits. We thank God for the benefit. Any man in here say amen to that? Thank you, Jesus. We thank God for the benefit, but it was not... <laughs> it was not primarily designed for us. The womb was primarily designed for God. I said, now wait a minute now, where is that fitting? Because God knew one thing, this is one thing he knew, and this is one thing we don't understand until Adam says it. But, and he doesn't say it until after the fall. But watch this. He's, we understand now that God is saying, I'm not coming down and make nobody else. I'm not going to come down and create not another soul. I'm going to partner with the woman. I'm going divi- to have a divine partnership with the woman. What I have put inside of her womb will be able to carry the life that will come forth so that the multiplication will happen, so that the increase will happen, and the replenishing will happen, so that she can walk around. I just told you, my, my, just last night, my spiritual son just had a baby, they, they, and, and his wife just had a baby. So now she's walking around carrying in her life. Have you thought about this? Come on, have you thought about this? The, the woman gets to walk around with creative miracles happening on the inside of her? I'm talking about creative miracles. I'm talking about eyes forming in head where there was no eyes and sight being given to eyes that's on the inside of her. Have you ever thought about the fact that, that, that ears grow and began to listen and hear on the inside of her? You understand that a nose begins to smell and come on, and a mouth is formed and a tongue is put with little dots on it so it can taste what the mother is eating. Have you have come to the understanding that the, did, you, did you clearly know that the brain is formed first and God then wraps a skull around the brain? The brain isn't put inside of the skull. The brain is formed first and a skull is now created around, which is hard and Oh, my God. And bones are being formed, and then little fingers are now protruding out of where there was no fingers. And my God. And a heart is beating, and lungs are breathing, and kidneys are functioning, and all of this. And hair begins to form out of follicles that was not there at all. And my God. And Goodness gracious, and every tendon and every tissue and every bit of every bit of the senses are formed inside of this woman, and the things start moving around on the inside of her and kicking every once in a while and saying, I don't like that food, and I don't I don't want to hear that music, and I don't like God, my God, my God. Oh my God. All on the inside of her womb. That's how valuable she is. Oh, she's something. She's something. Adam understood. Oh, she's something. She's something. She's something. She's something. something. You got to understand. You got to get this, you got to get this, you got to get this, you got to get this. God says, that's my partnership now. We're in partnership. So God already breathed breath into her that would produce breath in every other one. He don't even have to come and breathe again. Thank you, Jesus. It's women walk around with breath for the child before she ever get pregnant. When she's a teenager, she got the breath of her children on the inside of her. So that when the when 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 that egg and the and and and, and, and that in that sperm, glory to God, Jesus Lord, meet up 
the breath that was waiting for it. Oh, he ain't helping me. It's there. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Is that who she is? That's who she is. She's going to help populate the earth. Without her, there are no beings on this earth. She becomes the very end of creation. God saves the very best for last. It's you. Adam knew it. He said, my goodness, look at this. He wasn't just looking at her makeup and her outside. He was deeper than that. That's where we had to come at the fall. <laughs> See, that's why, that's why hell have attacked the womb. See, Genesis chapter 3 helps us to understand something. Genesis chapter 3 at the fall, God says something to her. He says, no, to the snake, he, 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 when he speaks, he says, from her womb is going to come one that's going to crush your head. And you're going to bruise his heel. See, God actually created the womb so that if he ever had to come in the earth, <laughs> if he ever had to create, come in the earth, he had an entry in because there was no other way to get in here except through a woman's womb. So God himself created that womb so that he could be inside. Oh, my Lord. When you think about Mary carrying God on the inside of her, so that he could now invade the earth. Uh. <laughs> Without her, God can't get here. And you're going to crush his head. He's going to bruise your heel. The cross is but a bruising. You mean... The whooping, the, the agony, and the all is nothing but a bruising of his heel. It's not his whole body. It's just his heel being bruised. Are y'all with me? You got to get this. It's crazy. Now watch, watch. And he says to that enemy, he says, and there shall be enmity between you. And the woman says nothing to Adam. God doesn't say anything to Adam. He doesn't say to Adam, it's going to be, it's going to be your seed. He doesn't say to Adam, it's going to be inventory between you and the snake. He said, no, between that woman and this snake is going to be enmity. From that day, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, hell has hated your guts with a vengeance. Hell hates every woman because you have a womb. He hates me, but he hates you more. Which is why his attacks against you are relentless. He comes after every part of your being to destroy you any kind of way he can. He will use any vessel to do so. He'll use men, he'll use other women, he'll use anything to destroy you because he hates you. Because you have a womb. It's an amazing thing that the church is called a woman. It's just an amazing thing that the church is called a woman. And so, listen to me close. So, every issue that you're dealing with on this earth, I told them the other day, my new book is just coming out, should be read by the, hopefully, oh, pray in Jesus' name. <laughs> um, it's a hard book to write because it's, it's called the, the, the Real Issue, A Woman's Womb. Every issue that we're dealing with has to do with the, her, your womb. Homosexuality has to do with, it is a man who has said he does not need the use of a woman's womb. 
You ain't heard that on TV, have you? Two women together says, we will not provide to men our womb. Yet we'll take toys to mimic me. Oh my God. You're going to take a toy to mimic me, but you don't want me. That's just stupid, isn't it? <laughs> ah, Lord, it's, it's all about your womb. Hell hates your womb. So it does everything it can to pervert you and to destroy you from a womb level. So homosexuality is against women. And you see women calling a homosexual man girl. when he wants what you want. Oh, help me, Jesus. <laughs> oh, my Lord. He's not your friend. He's designed to come against you, to replace you. Hell designed him. It's against you. Abortion is against Abortion is in a direct attack against the womb. Millions of babies. All that creativity we just finished talking about. Destroy it. <laughs> and we say, oh, this is a woman's right to choose. Yeah, it is. Hell says, yes, it is. Keep choosing because he hates your womb and everything in it because what came from your womb destroyed him. <laughs> Hysterectomies. I could go through a litany of things. I got so much stuff. Human trafficking. It's a womb issue. It's a womb issue. Human trafficking has to do with your womb. Prostitution. Incest. Rape. See? See look, listen, look at all this stuff that you may not even have thought about that is totally against women. But why? Because it's an enemy. It's an enemy that heard God said, perfect enmity. The woman forgot. He never forgot. And never will forget. If you're my enemy, then we on, it's on. And the best ones I can use to help me are other women. If I can convince other women to help me to destroy you, I will get them to help me to destroy you, and then I will destroy them. Right. <laughs> what God meant for beauty, hello, hell has tried to destroy, take advantage of. See, last thing I'll tell you, my time's gone. So this last thing I'll tell you. I used to tell my daughters all the time, I said, now let me tell you something. You don't, don't let any man uh, have access to your womb. I said, okay, Danny. I said, no, this is the reason why. The reason why is not just good enough to tell you not to do it, but the reason why you shouldn't do it is this. God not only partnered with you to bring life, he's entrusting you with the seal of your covenant. <laughs> See, when we stood up here with the couple, that represented the oath of a covenant. But every covenant has two parts. It has the oath and blood. Well, ain't nobody up here throwing no blood on nobody at no wedding. But we heard the oath, the vows is the oath, isn't it? 
I give myself to you. Come on, deaf do a spot. But it was supposed to be that night. Come on. When we consummate the marriage, that when the husband and the wife come together and the hymen is broken, that God has hid inside of her womb. For him and him only. So that the blood seal would now be there and seal this covenant relationship so that it could never be broken. Oh, my Lord. He entrusted her with it. He didn't give it to the man. I said to God, that ain't fair. You gave her everything else. You could at least put the, you could have put the hymen under my arm or something. <laughs> you, you, so that when I hugged her real tight, it broke and we get the blood everywhere. No. <laughs> you, 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 you valuing her a little too much here now. You putting too much value on her. No, I'm entrusting her to hide this and keep it for me and for her husband. And men will persuade single women to lay with him. And he breaks her hymen. And she's ever entwined in her heart with him. And she can't hardly ever get him out of her mind. Because she gave to him what belonged to her husband. And it takes salvation a lot of times to break that soul tie because she gave him the covenant seal to her union. And only God can give it back through the fact that all things have become new. <laughs> if it wasn't for all things have become new, we couldn't get that, get that back, but hallelujah, all things have become new. All the old things are passed away. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome right there? Yeah. And so listen to, me, listen to me as I close here. I want you to get this. You really have this. Older women have to teach younger women if about nothing else about the hymen that God has entrusted you with to keep for your husband. Because he don't have one. He has no way to seal your covenant if you don't keep it. Virginity is not something just to be doing. <laughs> he wasn't supposed to be dealing with nothing either. But she definitely doesn't. That's what I would tell my daughters. You have to protect this. You have to protect this. And they would. And they did. Hallelujah. Because they had a reason for. Is that making any sense? had a reason for. Let me, listen, let me tell you something. The last thing I'll tell you is this. Um, <laughs> women, um, women have the ability uh, mm, okay, I got, I got 10 minutes. Let me tell you this. So let me tell you to go here. Let me help you with this. In the the relationship of intimacy. When a husband and wife come together in the level of intimacy, what happens in that place is, this is the premise of that book. A woman makes a sound that he cannot resist. She makes a sound that can fool him to make him think he's done something <laughs> when nothing has occurred. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm trying to be, 
I'm trying to be careful with you. I know we at church, right? <laughs> but, but nothing has happened. But she can make a sound that will cause something to happen with him. And in a few minutes, he's asleep. And he's no longer bothering you. Am I talking to the right person? Hey, oh my God. There is not a sound a man can make that can fool a woman. And it doesn't have the same reaction on her anyway. Which is the reason why I tell men that pornography has more to do with what they hear than what they see. <laughs> They're listening for the sound of pleasure and they don't even care if it's another person that's providing it. Because their ears are attracted to this sound. A man, God had put it in him to hear a woman who is pleased, satisfied, grateful, thankful, he cannot resist it. And if a woman learns to bring that sound that happens in intimacy, outside of the intimate relationship, into her everyday interaction with men, he will jump over a wall and run through a troop. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you the truth. I'm just, my I ain't got but 18 minutes. You, you get, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you got you to hear what I'm trying to tell you. you gotta hear what I'm trying to, I got eight minutes. I'm almost finished. I got eight minutes, so you got to hear me now. Watch this now. I want you to get this. You got to get this. So a man buys you a gift. You don't like it. But instead of telling him you don't like it because you don't want to hurt his feelings, you go, oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate this. The next time he buys a gift, he buys the same type of gift. <laughs> Anybody experience what I'm talking about? Okay, why? You made the sound. The sound said I was pleased and grateful and thankful and satisfied. And when he heard that sound, he wants to hear it again. Every man who hears the sound wants to hear it again. He's addicted to the sound. It's like being on crack. I'm telling you, it's like being on crack. It's like, it's like, it's, it's, oh my goodness, she, oh my God. <laughs> and if you, in, again, if you're a man and you can hear it outside of your house, you got to know how to protect yourself against the sound. So I had a, I, I was in, in, in a store, and the guy came in. I hadn't seen him in a while. All of us visit this store pretty much in the morning, get our coffee, our gas, and all that kind of stuff. And I hadn't seen him. I said, bro, where you been? He said, man, I've been doing this. I've been doing da-da-da. And the lady behind the counter said, hey, baby, how you doing? It is so good to see you. She says, goodness, don't stay away so long. I said, oh, he won't. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, be here. he'll be here tomorrow. Just because of the way she responded to him. So, 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 the, so, the, so the man got an ugly tie. The wife says, that's an ugly tie. It is hideous. I'd hate that tie. Why are you wearing that tie so much? Because somebody at work said, the woman at work says, oh, that's a nice tie. I like that. That looks nice on you. You look good in that tie. And he wear it all the time. 
Now, wearing a tie for the wife, wearing a tie for the woman at work who acknowledged that it was a good tie on him because he heard the sound from that woman. He didn't hear it from his wife. Mm. And when the woman learns the sound, how to make it right. Again, if I call my wife right now on my phone and put her on speaker, what you would hear is this. Hi, mister. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go, there you go. That's what I say too. See, she knows what sound to make to get all my money. <laughs> and she makes it regularly. You understand? So when you are fussing at him, couple one, come back one more time. I got two minutes. I got three minutes. Come in one more time. Get in the right position. The right position. There you go. Nope, the right position. Good. <laughs> From this position, she is pronouncing the purpose, but she's also talking vision. And she, when she's in this position, and think from this position, not standing in a position, this is a mental position in her mind. If I'm in this position, what I should do if there's a conflict is I need to talk to him from here. What I don't want to do is to talk to him from here. Because when I talk to him from here, he has to defend as a man against foreign and domestic challenges. Oh. <laughs> oh, yes. 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 So now she becomes an enemy. Wow. And I have to protect my place. But when she talks to him from here, he has no defense. He doesn't have to be defensive. So, honey, <laughs> help me to understand how buying a new lawnmower fits in with the vision you gave me to pray for. That's what's up. That's what's up. Never turned and faced him. You gave me the vision. So what do you want, how you want me to pray about this? How you want me to accept this? How you want me to walk in? How you want me to announce this? Does the new lawnmower fit where we're going right now? Help me with, just help me with it. That's all I want to know. I'm not even confronting you. We can keep the lawnmower. Lawnmower's not the issue. I just need clarity. Oh. <laughs> what do you think he's going to do? Take the lawnmower back, most likely. Think about it. Oh, he's going to think about it, even if he doesn't take it back. Yeah. The, the next purchase is not going to be the same. He's not going to purchase the next thing without the conversation, most likely. Because she handled him right. She handled him not as her son. but as her husband, as them. Is that making any sense? Because yes. this is my drop the mic statement. <laughs> Men don't make love to their mamas. Oh. Only their wives. Thank drop you.
เอา Our time is up. We're a little over, actually, but we promised a short Q and A. But I want to give an opportunity for you all to sow to give. We didn't charge for this. Ten dollars is only for the meal, and we're not making this a pressure give. If you've been blessed, if you've been ministered to, I, when we close, you can bring an offering up or bring it up momentarily here. I mean, got a check, make it payable at Jubilee City Church. I can tell you this: whatever you give doesn't go to our church. Whatever you give, our team will count it up, and every dime goes directly to Bishop. We're taking nothing off the top. So I just want you to know that, and our people here to make sure that happens. Those that handle the finances, I don't. I'm not involved with it. We can, you can give electronically if you can put that up, John, on the screen with direction how to give electronically. Yes, you can put a note in there that it's for Bishop Larry Jackson. Of course, we'll know what this offering when it was taken, so we'll know. If you want an envelope, raise your hand. They'll make sure you receive one. Complete the information. You can also put it where it says other uh, Bishop Jackson. But I have no words. A couple of weeks ago, when we were announcing this, I kind of emphasized the importance of you all making this session because, <clears throat> as a leader, I take very seriously who stands behind the sacred desk and delivers God's word. I don't just bring any old. Most people that I know, I wouldn't even bring up here, because to me, your heart and what we allow to come into your heart from the Word of the Lord is precious, and we don't take this lightly. We felt very strongly that Bishop Larry Jackson had a word for our people, and I almost didn't want him to stop. But guess what? He'll be preaching here tomorrow morning at 10:30 at Jubilee City. So I encourage you. Of course, most of you will probably be here, but I want to encourage you to bring people that you know that need to hear a message like this. I don't know where he's going tomorrow. I'm not, I'm not telling him what we need. We haven't had any conversation about our church. I just know the Spirit of God directs him, and there's a lot of depth in him, as you can probably tell. A lot of revelation in him, as you can probably tell. So tomorrow, we're not going to have our normal. Fellowship time, so we're going to have more time to minister. So you're going to take your liberties tomorrow. The time we would normally use it for fellowship after service, we're not going to have that tomorrow. So we can take the whole time and just sit under the word of the Lord. Don't you love the word? Don't you love it when the Holy Spirit speaks a clear word? Father, I bless your people. I pray as they prepare their offerings and see that they're sowing to the life of Bishop Larry Jackson. I thank you because we know his life, his ministry is good ground to sow seed into. And as your people are giving, Father, I thank you. They're in covenant with you for everything your kingdom has to offer. As they seek first the kingdom, everything they have need of is added to them. We bless the man of God. We thank you for the grace upon his life. We speak your word, dear God, over his life, his wife, his children, his church, and all that you've called him to do in his kingdom assignment. And as we partner with him, the increase and the blessing of your kingdom floods our lives to ever flowing. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. And amen. You can just come and bring your offering up here. Say it again. You hear what Bishop said? Give your seed an assignment as you come and give. You can come and pray over it. We're going to close just a few minutes of Q and A. You can come now and bring your offerings and bless the man of God. We have baskets, three baskets up here, one on each side and one in the middle. Hallelujah.
Father, I speak your word over your people as they've given. I speak your word, dear God, over these offerings and these love gifts. I thank you the increase of your kingdom abounds in every life in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. I want to thank all of the great pastors and apostles and leaders in our city for coming. So good to see you all. Thank you for coming. We're going to give a short time. A lot of people are leaving now, but a short time for Q&A. And uh, we're not going to have long for that. But if anybody has some burning questions for Bishop, we're going to have a mic up. So just raise your hand and uh, we'll make sure he addresses those questions. Anybody have a question for Bishop? Navarre, you have a question? Check. Bishop, um, we, we don't have a question. We just have a earnest thank you. Um, my wife didn't know I was gonna, what I was going to say, but I, I just I speak from the most sincerest part of my heart that in just this moment this short day we spent hearing what is in you has been marriage changing mm. I mean mm. I've, I've been in church all my life I've heard many preachers from T.D. Jakes on down and I've never heard the word of God put in such a uh, holistic complete yet practical an official, impactful way, and we just wanted to say thank you. And and when you were talking about putting a putting a, a assignment on your seed, for the first time we had that moment. I've been hoping for, waiting for. Before I could tell her, she said, "God just told me that we put a assignment on our seed and an amount, the same amount God told me." I'm in tears when you tell when you were talking about it. Tears running on my face. I looked at her, I said, "Write a check for X amount of dollars," and she said. <gasps> and she went berserk because we haven't had that moment yet so I know what's about wow. to happen ah. something crazy miraculous is about to happen so we just wanted to say thank you oh, thank you thank you so much thank you so much thank you bless you awesome awesome definition yeah it, it and well you can find it also when Moses asked to see the glory of God and God says I'm gonna put you in the cleft of the rock <clears throat> he put it's it's my understanding that he literally not a crevice in the mouth it was not a crevice he literally put him in the rock because that rock represented Jesus so therefore if any man be in Christ that's the only way you can see the father and that cleaving has to be that way that you're in Christ. So that cleaving is you're in one another. That's the them mindset. That, that I represent my wife, my wife represent me. We are one together in everything. So that's the cleaving. And my, and my chasing after her has to do with the fact that I'm chasing after myself. Thank you. Beautiful. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. I just want to thank you for bringing it all out so clearly. Amen. And I always had problems with wondering about the enmity between mm. man a uh, woman, uh, putting uh, enmity between them, and you brought it out so beautifully and explained. I never heard it put like that. And uh, I just thank you for everything that you have uh, put in us today. Because Amen. it was brand new Amen. for me. You Amen. know, the way you put everything and brought it out so clearly. I and, and it so you know, much. interesting enough about enmity there, we've got to make sure we get that message to other women. Um, most women don't know hell hates them at the level that it does. If they really understood how much hell hates them, um, they wouldn't play with hell at all. My God. Because that is your primary enemy. Um, in the in the universe is hell. That's it. That's it. So, awesome. Right here, bro. That has.
has raised sons, mm -hmm. how do you get them to listen to you when you don't have that relationship, that the them relationship? How do you get them? Is there a, a biblical way that you can get them to listen to you? Oh, yeah. Men, men will respond to your voice still. Your sons still respond to your voice as long as you know how to talk to them. If you, if you speak to them right, they will respond right. Um, they don't know how not to. Um, it might catch them off guard at first because they're not used to it. Matter of fact, I talk about that in the book. What to expect from this process, because there's a process. Because at first, he might think you're manipulating him. And men hate manipulation. They hate it. Unless they want to be manipulated. They will allow manipulation if they want it, but they hate it otherwise. And as long as he knows that you're not manipulating, once you've moved past that place, then there's a process. But it's all in the book. It, I, 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 I laid it out so that you would have all of that. Amen. Amen. Good question. It is. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Um, I believe you're writing a new book and you were addressing the, um, all the issues with women. Yeah. In the new book, do you address and um, help them to understand like with sex trafficking or women that has those different, so do you give them ways to deal with those? Yeah, I, 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 yes, I am going into all of that and how um, it has affected them in their hearts and minds, how to get away from it. Um, that's what's taking me the time. This, the research on this book is deeper than even the research on the numbers book because it's so much related to this and I've got to be accurate in every point of it so that those that would read it that would say, well, and come against it won't have a leg to stand on. So that's what's happening. But yes, I'm dealing with all of those issues individually so that we can see how they will, they affect women and why, and why they start and where they're coming from. You know, because again, even with human trafficking, it is not all womb, but primary womb, okay? Some of it is for work, okay? So, so I have to make sure that I, I differentiate between that and all that kind of stuff. So it's a lot. So, so hopefully, hopefully September I'm finished. I'm praying in Jesus' name that I'm finished by September. Anyone else? Right here. Thank you. My question is your opinion on issue in my marriage um now i'm pretty open so i don't mind if you guys judge but if you do god bless you anyways oh okay um i'm at that point where my husband now i'm sorry i'm at that point now in my marriage where my husband has mounted me on the wall and it seems like he no longer takes interest in me mm -hmm. it seems like he pushes me away more more than he wants me mm -hmm. and i found myself being the the chaser or the hunter in a sense, mm -hmm. but it's like I'm becoming more of an irritation in mm -hmm. the process. Mm -hmm. Can you give me some advice? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Go out there and buy that book, The Sound. <laughs> okay. She already got it. Then you, you good, you good. Just put that into practice. Um, it's an easy read, it's a quick read. Don't, don't let it be. You can read through it and go back and make sure you're making, making these points in your life. Matter of fact, it's places in the right in the book so you know that you're doing it right. He will respond. He will turn if done right. I promise you this. Um, unless he's just an absolute knucklehead. And there are some absolute knuckleheads. But, but most of them don't have fathers and dot, 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 dot. Okay. Now, let me let, me let you all know something about men at this point and food. Um, food is designed right now it is being designed to take away masculinity. Okay, so, so, so it is placing into men estrogen more than testosterone, okay? And so there are, because of the chemicals and all of those things, men are eating more estrogen than they've ever done before, which I believe is the rise of even homosexuality in children. Because we've been finding, we've, we, we got, we got, we've, we've got, um, God, it's, I, I would have to bring you, I, I don't want to go too deep into it, but one, one scientist found that frogs, because of the chemicals sprayed on the food, 
that the frogs were turning into homosexuals, that, that male frogs um, were <laughs> becoming female frogs, and, and, and so on and so forth, um, because of the chemicals, just because of the chemicals on the food. And so that's happening with, with men. Um, never before have we heard about so much ED, um, ever before. You know, years and years ago. You know what that is, right, everybody? Years and years ago, men were having children way up into their 50s and 60s. You know, 13, 14, 15 children. And how were they having it? Having them having their children. Where did this come from? It is the, the food and all the chemicals that we're eating. And you're putting a lot of stuff in, we're putting a lot of stuff in our bodies. Also, you got to watch out for women. These more, too much estrogen causes breast cancer, okay? Can cause a lot of problems with your own body as well. So that stuff is being put in our food. So some of this stuff, the, the, the libido and all of that, because that's the chase hormone for men. That libido has to be, has to be elevated. And he's got to, if it's not, then he's, he's not chasing anymore. He's more couch potato and the, the, the testosterone is low and, and he's tired and he don't want to be bothered and he's moody. All that is testosterone. And so you, we've got, you got to also know how to help some of that if that, that could be the, a part of the problem, okay? And um, so, 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 but men have to take some responsibility for that and look over themselves. But first start with the sound and go from there. And we go from, you know, maybe when we come back, we can get him to come to the men's meeting. Right. Yeah. Right. Because it's a little harder than the women's meeting. I get in their face a little bit more. We need it. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, I appreciate the um, in-depth revelation you have regarding uh, marriage. Um, a little closer. Uh, yeah, in-depth. In depth and the revelation you have regarding marriage. Right. Um, I just have one simple question. Uh, I've been in church all my life, also. I've heard, read tons of books on marriage, and even before coming here, God is already dealing on my heart. I could praise and worship God all day. <laughs> I have a problem with leading my wife there, mm -hmm. and um, that's my my number one question. I, and I, my house, I, I would love to have just music flowing with the presence of God all day. Mm -hmm. I literally could be there, and it's a really tough place in, in my marriage right now. Okay. Um, that's, that's good. Now, again, she took your name. Did she not? That's good. So from that place, call yourself in alignment. Did you hear what I just told you? Pray from the perspective. I call my entire being into alignment. And everything that is hindering and attacking my wife, you cannot have her. Position her right, position her in front of you, in your own heart and mind, I'm protecting this woman. You do not get to have her. Now, it's interesting, I would, um, um, just to get you, you know, I, I used to, my wife would send me to the store to pick up um, sanitary napkins. And I would carry them, I would carry them proud. <laughs> and most men would have problems carrying sanitary napkins. The reason why I carried them proud is because that was my cycle. Do you hear, you hear what I said? That wasn't my wife's cycle. That was my cycle. I would even tell her when she was about to come on her cycle. I said, you know, we get ready to come on our cycle in another couple of days here. <laughs> Why? Because I could count the 21 days just like she could count them. Are you with me? Now, the, I, I also had another motive. It was six women in my house. I need to know when this riot was about to happen. <laughs> this, thing, this thing could get out of hand if I wasn't on top of it. But with my wife, I took that. Now, right now, my wife and I, we, I say it this way, we are overcoming MS. Okay? All right? Man, it's not no problem. We're we going to win. We're winning. Because that's not, my wife doesn't have MS. It's them. Make sense? 
So I'm fight for her. I will not let hell have her. So that's your position. Amen? Now, last thing I'll tell you. Get another man who understands what you are saying to me to now stand with you and pray with you through it, and it's over. You, you, you come back and be telling me how great your marriage is soon. Amen. Amen. That's all it takes. Anyone else? I've got a question. Yes, sir. In your travels and ministry, you mentioned the feminist movement earlier. Mm. It seems to me it's flooded over into the church. No, it's there. And how have you seen and how should it be dealt with the feminist movement that is coming to the church, especially among women who are in leadership? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, the thing is for them that, I, that I've dealt with in that way, I try to get them to understand the need for male leadership and to make sure they understand that even though you are valued um, at the level that you are valued, remember he was created first, not better, but created first, and that was a purpose. What if he's moving too slow? Well, yeah, that's usually what the case is. <laughs> um, and that's usually why she takes over. Yeah. Um, a lot of times she's trying to fill a void and a vacuum. And a lot of times she haven't met anybody like us. So when we come in, she will submit to me, yeah. but won't submit to the others. And that's when I can try to shift it a little bit by her submission to me. And I didn't love her at the level that I understand where she is because she's doing it out of necessity in a lot of kind. So that's apostolic fathering. Yeah, it is. Got it. That is. And, and you don't find that in the church. Unfortunately, you're right, sir. I was just going to ask a question along the same lines. I know you said, like, if you don't have a natural father involved in your life to get a spiritual father, like, what type of qualifications or characteristics would you look for in that man, or how do you, you know, establish that type of relationship? Okay. <laughs> Tell the pastor to send you his resume. <laughs> <laughs> and whatever's on his resume is what you look for. No, you need somebody that really is after the heart of God that's balanced. You want somebody balanced. You want somebody tilting one way or another. But you want a balanced person, but you really can't tell them until you're around them a little bit. But then you also know they have your heart. I have, my goodness, how many? Oh, Lord. I saw over 30 spiritual daughters that, um, that, are, that just, and I have sons too, but, but spiritual daughters that I just love and they know. You can tell a father. A father is a giver. A father is not looking for anything from you. Um, you know, and you also have to be careful um, that um, they act like a father, but they're a predator. Okay? And um, fathers are never predators, and never. you know that. You don't ever feel funny with them. You know, they, they, they got your back, and they're going to look out for you, and, and you know that. Okay? That's, that's, that's what you got to get. But you got to be around a person so they can, you can know who they are. It's, it, you just can't pick them out of a crowd. Right. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's all. good. Yes, ma'am? Last one. The full man virginity should be taught in junior high school. Yes, ma'am. What you said today was so awesome. I, I'm just wondering how many young girls, even guys, should hear this, yeah. and it's, it's, it's wasted. It's, it's interesting, too. I've, I've done it in schools um, um, where some of my leaders have brought me in to speak to some of the, it, it really goes over well in high school as well, but I've, I, I even done this at college, and it just blew the college students away. Um, they never heard anything like that, and, um, and it really shifted the minds of the men more than the women, interesting enough. It's a lot of times because they, they realize I'm taking something that doesn't belong to me. Yeah. And when a, a, a man really doesn't want what doesn't belong to him, in a lot of cases, unless he's just a dog, and you've got plenty of them. But um, I think you're right. Um, we, we do that. We make sure that the young girls, well, in our church and our organization know this teaching. Um, and then we used to do marriage seminars for singles only. So um, it would be a whole marriage sermon only singles in the, in the room so that we could teach them what to do before they ever got there. 
So those are some places we've done it, but you're right, but all the way down to that level um, would be good. Um, so Diane, write the book, please. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah I've, I've thought about it, Jesus, help me. <laughs> yeah, I, like I said, I'm, in, I'm right now writing two books at the same time. I do that too much, I think. Um, but I'm writing two right now, and usually a year I write two to three books. So that may be one that could come along the line. Yes, yes. Yeah, we have it in our, we have it in our manual. It is. Matter of fact, I have written it. True Value, the True Value book has a manual that goes along with it. And the manual teaches, you can teach women from the manual and have sessions from, so it's an entire manual that's really intense. And it, that's in that manual. So you actually could do it from the manual. Wow, this can go on and on and on. Let us all stand. We're going to have to bring this to a close. This has been absolutely amazing. I want to encourage you all to have a wonderful evening, get some rest, and come back tomorrow morning at 1030, expecting God to move afresh and anew in our midst. Holy Spirit, we're so honored and grateful for your moving through. Bishop Larry Jackson, we thank you for the gift, Father. We pray and speak refreshing over him right now in Jesus' name. I thank you for every person that came, every man and woman that came today, that they had a divine encounter, that truth was spoken in the inward parts, that the reality of who they are in Christ is emerging afresh and anew. So as we leave this place, but not your presence, let the dealings of God prevail and continue to change us, make us, mold us, shape us into the vessels you've called us to be to advance kingdom purpose. Help us understand this is really all about the kingdom agenda not our local church, not any one church, the kingdom agenda. So as we leave this place, we release everybody under the weight of this word, let the power of God be manifested in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Greet each other in love and you are released.